Something funny, Rufus? Uh, what? No, no, no. Just uh, dumb shit. Was it about Golden Boy? I want to hear. I said what some guys will do just to get away from Kate. Cute. Do you like baseball? Baseball? Yeah. You're going to take a little jog over to Dick's Sporting Goods. Buy yourself a nice Louisville slugger. Bring it right back to the quad. And swing that bat as hard as you can into your nuts. Every hour on the hour. And every time you swing, yell Jumanji. Sound good? Sounds fucking great. Panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Rob. And this episode is going to be a spoilerful episode about Gen V season one, episode two, first day. And obviously, we're continuing our coverage with Gen V. Uh, we're doing this episodically, as we said before <laughs> early on the last podcast. So we're going episode by episode. I'm staying true to actually watching each episode. <laughs> separately before we come to the podcast not spoiling myself though i did get spoiled on something on episode four that somebody had mentioned to me recently i haven't watched episode four yet but i did watch the the first three so okay (laughs) but yeah we're doing season one episode two first day the synopsis for this particular episode straight from amazon prime video The Godalton University Mental Health Hotline would like to remind students at this difficult time that you are not alone. You might be bulletproof on the outside, but you're not on the inside. Our caring staff is trained to deal with you the specific emotional needs of superheroes, and they're here to help you. If you need to talk to someone, hope it's a phone call away or a V message away. Hashtag God you cares. (laughs) <laughs> i like the way say uh, i like the way it's like v message <laughs> yeah i message not because everything is about uh about Vought. Vought. yeah yeah so. and they actually that's part of it spoilers everybody yeah we're gonna talk about spoilers a little bit for the fact that they talk about social media and they have something that they give marie in the very beginning right away because she didn't have a phone your twitter is blowing up oh i don't have a twitter <laughs> well here it is i'm your and then they, they right away because of the whole situation publicize it but before we get into that we'll go right into initial thoughts what what did you like about the or what did you think of the episode well just like i thought in the beginning where you know even though the commercial makes it seem like oh everybody's happy go lucky in this university <laughs> that there was going to be a lot of messed up stuff in the background and man did we <laughs> see a lot the one thing that really caught my eye out of this whole thing was the amount of social commentaries that this show has. Oh, yes. It's insane. And I'm sure I still don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. And the, and what I mean by that is taking certain, you know, certain uh, traumas and certain things that, you know, real people in the real world go through and making it seem like it's a everyday thing it's a superhero ability or or no or yeah the i think what they're trying to do in there and their issues is we're talking about little cricket and her throwing up she's got bulimia right and and for her to do that she has special powers to to come out but it's also showing a commentary of how to be more involved she has to do this to in her case, expose her powers or do something with her powers and how bad it is for right. her as a person. Or the issue of, let's say, in the case of this episode, to be popular and they have the hot or not vote that right. you have. And I haven't seen a billboard like that on a show or a movie since a, a, a movie called Sydney White that had Amanda Bynes in it, which was literally a Snow White movie of her going to college and she shows up to college. And of course, you know, right. The witch character is played by a, a girl and her name, er, you know, everything was all snow white and the seven doors. Uh, yeah, no, symbolism. Exactly. but 
it had the same thing. So it shows uh, how that devastating that could be, because if you're not on number one, you're bad because you could see that happening to um, Jordan Lee. Right. And uh, Jordan. To jo- yeah, to Jordan. And, but you also it also you can also see the whole thing with Maria about cutting. You know, people who cut themselves yeah, in order uh, her to deal abilities with, them. with the cutting. And then right. they, but and that's that's the part that I was saying, they, the, you know, they, they make it seem like, oh, the cutting and the uh, and the throwing up is, a, you know, is produces a superpower. Yeah. When in reality, I mean, in real life, it it's I mean, even though in here you can see that it's also devastating for the character, but in real life, yes. it's devastating for people and you don't get any superpowers. You know, so I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, well, I love the show. Don't get me wrong, but it's yeah. just it's a very it's a very interesting way that they are describing these powers. And mm-hmm. I will go into also how this simulates the X-Men. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of so. people have been equating more and more like that, uh, right. as you have. When it comes to uh, the the show, obviously, it's uh, M for Mature. They don't say rated R or anything like that. So right. obviously they're looking for adults to be watching this so they can know the difference between fantasy and reality. But, you know, people could sit themselves. What they also don't really disclose or put a warning is anybody who has mental issues. That would be a trigger for them to lose their mind. Uh, somebody who has like who's out of it can't differentiate the reality from fantasy. Right. And then they're out there trying, you know, like you said, they could be cutting themselves saying, oh, I could do this with my blood. Look at what I could do. And no, you're bleeding to death or right. I'm throwing up and, and, and it's affected them. And well, I mean, again, uh, th- 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 there's a ton of things in there. I mean, maybe them bringing it up as a uh, as something for people to be aware about uh, or to see, you know, in case they are, are seeing people, you know, or feel that there are people doing this, that it's not a is it's not a normal thing yeah so yeah. the negative influence is what you're concerned about i think uh, it's from just the, the fact that yeah i don't know maybe Jim, uh, i mean i know they're bringing it up at, and hopefully throughout the entire season they really could touch upon the fact that all these things that these characters are doing to themselves in order for them to achieve whatever superpowers they're trying to do or even celebrity at this point because the majority of them are going to the school to become quote unquote a hero and yeah and a lot of their powers some of them like they stated in the very beginning with brinkman with uh clancy brown's character originally what he stated it's like you cut yourself that's yeah. not a hero type of power that's Correct. kind of and he basically flat out said it's gross meanwhile you had golden boy who was amazing at what he could do right but even still that was self-destructive because he blew up he turned into Icarus right in the sky. Instead of melting, he blew up. He killed himself <laughs> that way. Yeah, they're, they're, like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things in this show that I mean we'll see throughout the uh, the entire season. But I mean, besides those things, the other thing that I that of course uh, I caught on is the whole popularity thing. Mm-hmm. But yep. also how to- how toxic is the television? Or the entertainment world, I would say, when it comes to how they treat people. Oh, just yes. because just because they're trying to get ratings and things like that. Or, and, or clicks or correct subscribers and, or right. And how they exploit these people in order for them to, you know, make their money and and if they're not, you know, if they're not in the top ten or whatever it is, or well, screw them, you know, who cares about them? Yeah. You know, but it's um uh, you know, like gold, you know, what is it? Golden boy is his name. Yeah. Golden boy was exactly that. Or, you know, he was the number one choice to go to, uh, I guess to, uh, to the seven. And because of what happened, all of a sudden they abandoned him and they, and all they cared about was the money that they were losing and not why did this happen? And Mm -hmm. that's, you know, again, you know, this is this is a kind of a what I would say part of the boys universe on the fact that people keep getting hurt. People keep getting used in so many different ways. 
Yeah. Just because they want to make these supers look better. And of course, because Vought being a company wants to make sure that they're getting their money's worth, mm. that they don't care whose life they ruined. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm not trying to come up with, you know, trying to be a downer on this whole thing. No, just, I know that. It's interesting on how this show, especially in the boys universe, how all of that really does relate very because well it still relates it's still yeah. relatable they made it a little bit more apparent with younger actors and Correct. a youthful situation i should say for because there's they're still growing they're teenagers they're learning to develop these powers on their own but also learning to develop as a person correct and that makes it even worse so it's like a, a ticking time bomb not to make a pun in it about luke golden boy right. blowing up but literally, that's what it is. They they are their own worst enemy at times as well because well because with all this influence and everything. Exactly, and that's the whole thing with like you know probably kids going to school, high school, or even college where you know they don't have the maturity to yeah. deal with all these social things, and they don't have the maturity to know how or the experience in life to know how to deal with these things. So of course, this is a fantasy. Yes, but the fact that. They're showing it as, hey, some people with great superpowers are the more popular kids, and maybe the ones with the most awkward powers or something like that are the ones that are going to be made fun of. Correct. And I imagine that kids in school feel the same way, where it's like, hey, kids with the with the better hair, the better clothes, the better things are the ones yeah. that are going to be popular, while the ones that you know probably don't have the latest fashion or the latest sneakers. You know, yep. those are the ones that are getting made fun of and things like that, which I could see that relationship. And yes. unfortunately, I think that because of the way this this show is, which can get very rated R almost to the point of rated X or <laughs> NC or or NC-17. Correct. Yeah, it's probably not for kids to watch, you know, uh, but then again, high schoolers are going to watch whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, these days. Yeah. Yeah, well, especially. Um, you know, and we, we've mentioned it before, not on this podcast, but on my other podcast with Adrenaline, we make <laughs> jokes about how we used to just like, oh, I was watching that as a teenager or yeah, even no, I was exactly. like when I was a little kid. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you, we were Gen Xer. So obviously parents <laughs> were sometimes were hardly there. And you're just like, yeah, I snuck out of school and I went to go see this rated R film. Holy crap. Did you see that? <laughs> that is uh, that is true. That but is true. Kids will be kids. and. Just like you said, that uh, like gave that comparison about the kids who can't get that stuff, like don't have the popular clothes, the look, the makeup. Look at Marie Moreau. She has nothing. She doesn't even have a phone. Right. Or a computer at that. Exactly. So she she is coming in cold from whatever place was taking care of her. It looked like a hospital, I think. And uh, or a halfway house that is meant for kids that are with, you know, V right. juice inside them and uh, because of her situation. So she comes in and what? You don't have this. You don't have that. What? What's wrong with you? Yeah, exactly. Or if you look at a little cricket with her issues and how she has to do that as far as like for her power, she has to vomit in order to get little and then eat to get big. You got Kate Dunlap who is uh luke's well now ex-girlfriend because luke's no more <laughs> but right. she has to wear gloves because touching somebody automatically her her powers engage so she can influence them right there, there's a drawback to some of this kind of like the movie that i mentioned last week or uh, the last episode about sky high where Kids had all abilities, but you could be either a hero or a sidekick in that one. And the sidekicks had <laughs> all the stupid powers in the world. It's like, what can you turn into? A gerbil. <laughs> okay, well, that's a great power right there. All righty, then. It's like sidekick check. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's like Bruce Campbell and that, and that we're in there in gym class and they have to show their powers. Right. And it, it is power sampling. And he goes, he'll be like, sidekick. <laughs> He's like point <laughs> out as soon as they show their power, he goes, "Dude, what could you do?" Uh, I could glow in the dark. It's not happening right now, but it's gonna happen. <laughs> I could do it. He goes, "Sidekick," <laughs> right away. <laughs> but 
even that, but it's more dramatized, comedic, and that was for it was a movie for family anyway. Right. But in this case, it's the far end of the world. <laughs> I, I personally do enjoy the episode. And like you said, those points, those commentaries did bring through. Mm-hmm. But it also shows just naturally how people could be twisted around, changed mm-hmm. uh, as well. What We see that happens to Marie because she's deemed as the person that saved Godolkin University from golden right. boy and that was far from the truth because we know that jordan lee was uh, backed him off after, after a certain point and was holding him off and told marie to run and then marie was telling everybody to run run after that before uh you know luke came out and right. then of course luke's friend Andre is there too and Andre was trying to help to some degree try to stop him and they're both Marie and Andre are geared as being the heroes in this and that's where this episode kind of stems from they become instant uh, they're instantly popular right away and what I liked about it was the very first scene because literally it's at night it's after the incident you see them literally mopping up Golden oh my boy. god yeah you see flesh and chunks of flesh in the grout on the in the, the amount of carnage that yeah and they were just shoveling it and just kind of throwing it in the sewer and in a bucket and yeah, yeah. and uh it, it shows you how they're just mopping up and cleaning up after their own mess and the song that comes on was very very good to cover it and it's love uh, that song Phoebe Bridger's version of nothing else matters from Metallica. Yeah, and no, that is fantastic. It's amazing. I really did enjoy that. And I was so happy when I heard that I'm like, okay, finally. And now it's a show that I could gear to because there's certain shows that uh, I forget which show had it. Well, uh, I'm going to say, yeah, yellow jackets is a, a show that you could actually have like a Spotify playlist. I still haven't seen that. Uh, Sandman was another show that we uh, I had covered with Jamie on Sandman Cast, and that you could have a playlist because they had certain scenes and different uh, songs done by different right. people. And I was just like, okay, I, I'm liking this. The, I'm hoping they give us more songs. And at the very end, we did get another song, but during the interview process, there was a song I wasn't familiar with because <laughs> obviously it's probably more modern. <laughs> and popular for the kids right but i just enjoyed that because we got Banamarama at the very end and they're singing venus mm-hmm. but that that will we'll talk about that when we talk about the the scene where it comes up i thought it was hilarious <laughs> and but yeah i like when shows do that so that way because that seems to be the new cliche thing it's like let's have a playlist for this they did it for of all things moon Knight. they did yeah, and I actually liked a lot of the music that was on there because it was like almost it was techno and dubstep. Some of the stuff that I was hearing out of it, and I'm like, well, mm. yeah, from that end of the earth. Yeah, yeah, because it's uh, it, it's really interesting. I'll be very interested because you know some of these needle drops. I mean, let me tell you. First of all, they cost a lot of money, especially they're oh, they're yeah. like they're like a good huge part of the budget because uh, any movies like, like that i yeah i had spoken to um oh i was talking to a, a a director he's doing the movie still i mentioned it um who I, I met scott goldstein uh no, scott goldstein scott goldberg from mm-hmm. uh and he he's doing a movie he's currently in production they're still getting more people to pay into it which is great right it's called the forest hills and he's got uh He's got Shelley Duvall in it, and he's got Ed- Edward Furlong in it. it. It is geared more towards being her- a horrible horror movie. But he got Blackmore's Night. Now, Richie Blackmore is from Deep Purple, and it's Blackmore's Night is a show, uh, show uh, a group that Richie had created with his wife, and it's more Renaissance kind of music. Uh, apparently, one of the producers was able to get Richie to donate the song. For oh, the okay allowed them to use a live version of the song 
which was amazing because right. I, I had asked Scott, I said, how much would have it cost you if you had to, he goes, dude, it would have been like, thousands of dollars oh yeah so some of these so, just to get a song and they don't a, eat, and, and that's just literally for that to use it right but think about the royalties and everything on that correct it doesn't go to the movie or anything it, or the show it goes literally back to the artist and, and unless and because they have own publishing and playable rights yeah everything depends on the studio too is because Sometimes what happens is like, so let's say Sony, which of course has a also, you know, Sony music, Mm -hmm. um, there might be something there where even though they might put a a certain song from, you know, from an artist, Mm -hmm. they might not pay as much to that artist because Sony, of course, maybe owns the distribution rights or whatever it is that, you know, so who knows? how that works uh or maybe it's in their contract saying hey in the future we might use one of your songs in a movie and that's part of this contract here yeah um, well that's why you have to have an ironclad uh contract correct. when it comes to that a lot of artists nowadays when they're doing they're literally if they're putting out the music themselves they own it yes and with digital content the way it is now they're not making much on it. That's when it becomes an issue with uh, publishing for digital uh, distribution or digital digital streaming is the worst because you're still getting because I, I come from uh, pro audio where I was working with musicians, producers, engineers and and uh, artists like that, where literally for radio play, you are guaranteed because if you belong to ASCAP, BMI or CSAC, you're making 8.5 cents per play correct per whatever station or wherever it is in the United States or across the world so you can make money nowadays a majority of the people that make that kind of money still are older because that's what the agreement was back then now you make less than nothing from Spotify Pandora or any of those places or even oh, yeah Apple no exactly music. exactly i mean that's that's part of that big thing i mean listen that where an artist from what i hear really makes their money is concerts because that's live sound that, live music l- is the best live you music, gotta put yeah. people but, but get those butts in that seat sell your merch at the front door and ticket sales and that's why yeah. honestly ladies and gentlemen this is why that we have yeah, you know, it would cost you where it used to be like what you could. I used to get a concert ticket back in the late eighties for like twenty five bucks, and I'd have seventh row seats. <laughs> exactly. Now to get those same seats, you're looking at seven hundred twenty five dollars just to get to like maybe a nosebleed seat at times, depending on the artist. Like Bruce Springsteen, let's give that as an example. But front row seats or even a private venue could, char- you know, you're talking thousands of dollars. Yeah. I mean, listen, I I, I was looking at a Radio City Musical just to go see John Williams. And in the front, like towards the front, those were going for over a thousand dollars. And then towards the middle or something like that, about four to six hundred dollars. And then balcony seats and stuff like that around the 200, 150, 200 dollar range. And I was like, wow, and this is a composer for film, <laughs> which does not what I would say command the what I would say the he's got rock star presence, trust me. <laughs> well, n- not like he knows John. Right. Bruce. Yes, but not 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 the way you have like either a Taylor Swift or if you have like a Beyonce or something like yeah. that. You know, so but it was still up there and it was like, wow, OK, I mean, it's still pricey, especially for, you know, but yeah, no, that and but this is how they make their money. This is oh, how is. because uh, let's be honest. If I was a singer. And I was making shitloads of money of just from my music mm-hmm. and let's say that the studio was not keeping, you know, I don't know, 90 percent of it. 
then why the fuck do I want to go to a concert and put myself through that grueling schedule? <laughs> yeah, I know. Hell no. Yeah. Right. So I think that's the reason they do it. It's like, it's like, listen, this is, <laughs> I got to make money. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> exactly. So, but I've heard that some of this music can actually be like, you know, to license some of these pieces of music could be something like $25,000 for one piece of music or something like that. And now, yeah. All of a sudden, you have I don't know about ten different pieces of music in this in this one movie, uh, and if they're all going for anywhere from between ten thousand to twenty five thousand, I mean it's a few I don't know hundred but a uh, hundred thousand dollars just to you know get some music on this. Yeah, that's that's why a lot of these shows have a high budget. Yeah, and that's why you see Netflix, HBO, all that stuff. You know, this is prime. So, and they, they're, they do make original content right. a lot. Uh, like I said, we're doing Invincible when that comes out in November, Jamie and I. So they have music in that as well, but you have to factor in that's part of the whole budget scheme of like either TV and film nowadays. They have to factor that in. That's a big chunk of change because to keep people interested in it, yeah, you know, look at Blue Beetle. If you did, you watch it yet or no? Yeah, I saw Blue Beetle. Yeah, that had some music in it too. Think about it. Yeah, yeah. that that's that's a big chunk of change. Now, mind you, we'll probably cover that at a later time. Just do a short little review. But my overall, I enjoyed it. Just to let you listeners know, I did enjoy it. It was it was a fun film. The only drawback to me, honestly, with that particular film was that it was you know it's an origin story <laughs> and i'm like they've done we've done this before they don't really have to jump right in. it should have only only been within the first like 15 20 minutes but uh the whole movie is literally an I, enjoy, story. I enjoyed it for the most part of it um i thought it was uh it was good yeah it was better than pro you know it was better than some of these other movies that we've seen but unfortunately yeah. it was a colossal epic failure at the box office and yeah. you know yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that at a later time. Correct. Right now, let's concentrate on this. Uh, we've kind of digressed, but uh, basically, in a nutshell, what we were discussing about music was uh, pretty shocked and pretty cool that we got some awesome music in this, and it could be a Spotify <laughs> playlist. Correct. Uh, the I'll, We'll move right into what I like to call like highlights or points or thoughts that I liked within the episode. Uh, the fact that we do get a boys alumnus in this episode we get ashley barrett back so colby minifee comes back as ashley barrett and this is present day ashley so i kept looking at her hair going is that the wig is that the wig because <laughs> she was pulling her hair at the very end for the last season that we saw her that she was practically bald who is this uh ashley barrett the head of vaught Oh, uh, the redhead. The, yeah, the redhead. Uh, <laughs> she's uh, she's played by uh, Colby Minifee. Minifee. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She's calling because she has to talk to uh, the universe, the head of the university, the the woman that's there, right? Uh, and uh, because they have to get the publicity property uh, properly done for these kids, who is there? Uh, they were saying, well, who else is there? Who else was in charge? And oh, we got Marie Moreau. We got Andre. Okay, all right. Well, we'll we'll play that card, that race card, and I'm like, that was kind of messed up, but honestly, it works a lot in that favor if you think about it. Yeah, and, no, it does. But you could see that Andre had no, n didn't want to have anything to do with it in the very beginning at all, because this is about his friend Luke. But we also see Marie's change because, like, literally within a heartbeat, she went from almost getting kicked out by Brink, not being popular because she doesn't have anything cool because she came from poverty, if you think about right. it, and to being like, you are th within the top 10 people on this hot or not thing that's there. Yeah, she's the first freshman to have ever been in the top 10. Yeah, so it makes it look like, wow. Uh, and I, that's why I made the correlation to uh, that movie, Sydney White, because it was the same thing. A freshman hit number 10. Right. Yeah. Within the top 10. And uh, and then Andre was there, too. But you see right away Jordan Lee. 
they freak out. I'm not going to say he or she because both of them are the same person. And <laughs> they they freak out. They're like, I'm number five. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's kind of messed up. So, and you see her, Marie, get more comfortable with this at a certain point. You see her yes. a- embracing it. Andre, you could see it from the time that they do selfies with the other classmates on campus. And then you're also seeing it from her point of view when she sees how people are utilizing social media. Like the, she encounters one guy and he goes, oh, oh, hold on. I go, yo, yo, my friend Marie is here. Uh, like, blah, blah, blah. And he, he, you can see his eyes when they, when they blink, they blink the other way and the other way. So they yeah, blink that, from left to right in- and up and down. I saw that. That was interesting. <laughs> it looked like a, a fish or some sort of lizard or something with eyes. Right. But he he wanted to do a live stream pretty much like YouTube or TikTok or what have you. And to have this like, hey, look, this is my friend. That way they could get more subscribers. And she kind of embraces it a little bit. And then later on, you see her, you know, can I get a selfie with you? And everybody's doing selfies. But as she's walking past everybody mourning the site where Luke killed himself. And you see the girl with the outstretched, so like, you know, Reed Richards, you know, Mr. Fantastic arm going out for a selfie stick to get herself in the shot. <laughs> That's what I was going to mention. Um, <laughs> this definitely showed that whole bullshit that you know that you see from being upset and then yeah she was fake (laughs) she was fake crying just so she could get her you know her likes or whatever it is yeah her (laughs) views and stuff like that you're like what the fuck come on (laughs) you know that's the kind of stuff that just really pisses me off about especially social media and things like that and that people actually believe it oh that's the part that gets to me that people people, actually they they make it their career yeah, which I'm that's like what somebody said to me. Uh, I I went to a client's home once or something, and then they're like, Oh, my child is this and that, they're an Instagram star. <laughs> and I'm like, I have to be polite and say, Okay, <laughs> awesome. And the back of my head is, I've never heard of them, they're not famous to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I would I, I would I would have said it. I was like, oh, they're an Instagram and they're a star. Well, why haven't I heard of them? Yeah, and that's yeah, <laughs> exactly right. But uh, you have to be nice as per <laughs> usual for any company or anything. But you have to be like, okay, good for you. <laughs> uh, it's just you know, it's just amazing the the world we live in nowadays. Of course, it, it's true <laughs> though. It, it is the way we live, but. uh if you look uh, at Marie, she continues this journey, though, with the the promotion, the media and everything else to the point where uh, Guardians of G- Godolkin, that the, the press was trying to they were trying to push it. And, you know, it's Vought influence and their influence of trying to get it out there. Get the interview with Andre, get the interview with Marie. Right. And then getting them set up with, oh, it's like, does she have wardrobe? No. <laughs> uh-uh. and the guy who's helping her he goes she, nope she doesn't have that nope nope she doesn't have that oh we got to work on that <laughs> it, it, it's like it's like a whole you know media blowout like i for said it, it's 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 the show really does show the ugly side of the entertainment industry and the and that ugly and, and you know for anybody out there who wants to you know all of a sudden be uh, a hit on Instagram and all this stuff or whatever, keep in mind that you are a product and that's yeah. it. If you cannot make them any money, they don't care about you. And it's not about what you did for them, bef- uh, you know, yesterday and what you think you could do for them tomorrow is what can you do for them today? And, and that's that, it. <laughs> and that's it. And yeah. that's how it is. And And it's unfortunate that that's, that's how the you know, business is. That's how the business is. And funny enough, uh, one of the big reasons I got out of the business was because of that. Yeah. Because I just, uh, I was tired of um, the amount of fake people that you said, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of genuine, amazing people there. But there's also 
some seriously bad people. <laughs> oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. They that they're cutthroat and they want to, you know. Yeah, yeah. You got to be a pirate about it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no joke. A, a pirate, a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> not not to make a joke or a pun, but uh, yeah, I, I I found it really interesting the whole the whole setup for this episode because not only does Marie encounter that that issue of celebrity because she's crushing on somebody else that um that that also prides herself on um for um for like social media and stuff like that or even right. being a celebrity yourself which would be justine and she's an influencer and she's attending the crimson county school for performing arts within godolkin Right. And she's the one that gets it out of Emma little cricket about the bulimia. And then she utilizes that to get more subscribers. Oh, of even course. though even though she has like been in film. She's been in vault fi- vault films. And Emma even brings it up and then just gushes over it. But you know, later on we find out, you know, that uh, Justine uses that to capitalize for her own uh youtube or whatever it is right right and and that's what's really messed up about it because and this is the whole again we go back to that social commentary where one person was all of a sudden using another person just so they can actually do that and then you know here it is little cricket is feels like oh you know here's somebody that really cares about me and yeah she and be opening up to herself to her and i have a friend you know right i have a friend and all this stuff and next thing you know that friend was using yeah her just for that which really sucks <laughs> it's really sad it's it's one of those where i started feeling more for emma in a sense that she is very <clears throat> excuse me she is very susceptible to that because she is like or susceptible to depression suicide because you could see something sad within her already based upon the bulimia yes and then on top of that in the very beginning when they were in um the the class for drama and they were had to buddy up and that's why they had that conversation she and then it came out because they have to do a scene together and she was trying to do a little person, big person kind of scenes. And uh, Justine was telling her, no, you don't have to do that. Uh, She goes, I didn't do this with you because you're a little bird. You could turn into a little person. I'm talking about, you know, so that way we can do something and show who you are, which was very sincere. I think through Justine, but, as soon as like the opening happened for like information to expose somebody, that's when it kind of went on a, a twist. Yeah. And, uh, but the, the way Justine got Emma's, uh, uh, appeal and affection towards her is, and befriending her is because of the guy that she slept with that we saw in the first episode when she was riding his huge humongous member <laughs> with her arms. <laughs> <laughs> and and she, she she brings it up sedating. It's like, yeah, he does that because uh he probably just wants to make his dick look big. <laughs> <laughs> <And> <laughs> so basically he used her and Emma kind of figured it out. But yeah, you know, right. Justine was there for the, the quick wit and retort saying that he's got a small cock. <laughs> right. But that's the whole thing. The whole thing is that, you know, all of a sudden, you know, oh, I got used. Uh, but here it is. And then, of course, you know, uh, Justine is trying to tell, oh, you know, he's using you, but yet you're doing the same thing to her. She does the same thing in the end. Yep. Right. Yeah. I don't so, think she was outrightly looking to do that. I think when the information was there, the moment ar- arose for um, Justine to do that. Yeah. I, I don't think it was intentional at first, but it just became to that. It got to that point And, you know. Then when Emma got hit hard with it, she wound up doing what she shouldn't be doing, which is going back to her bulimic thing and making herself very little. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then Marie coming back to the room going, where the f- hell is she? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, like I said, it's 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 a fucked up show, but it's a great show because there are just so many different things to it. And it definitely follows the what I would say, the. Uh, the boys format. And that's what I like definitely about this show. Yeah, I yeah, I like the flow of it too. This is definitely the the story is there now because we do get some. Yes, we said spoilers when we talked about this, everybody. So obviously, spoiler. Uh Andre misses out on the interview process because he went investigating himself because after a little blow up with uh Marie or conversation with Marie because Marie just basically kicked him down. She goes, I almost got kicked out of school for you, and I barely know you guys. I know that Luke was your friend, but I wasn't friends with him. I just met him that night, and you guys were all the cool people, and I was there. They were going to make me take the fall. That's why she was doing the whole interview thing. Right. And Andre didn't really want to do it, but also Andre wanted to find out more about what was going on within uh with Luke because Luke had the last words that he said to him, Luke said to him was uh, something about the trees and his father. So Andre's father knew something. It's right. Like, it, Cause he actually, Andre went to his father and said, Hey, did Luke give you something or <laughs> give you something for me or say something, told you something for me. Did you and see it, episode three yet? No. You haven't seen it. Okay. So yeah, so it you'll you'll quickly learn that there's um that there's so much going on yeah. in the background and so much that pe- that people know that it's what makes it all messed up. Yeah. So, yeah. But I I knew that was going to happen based upon like okay, something's going on, there's something that we're going to learn. We do learn something at this point because uh, Andre winds up figuring he breaks into Brink's office during the time that he was supposed to be doing his interview. Uh, the person that was in charge of the like the promotion for this, for the interview itself, for Vought, right. was like, well, it was supposed to be Guardians of Godolkin. Now it's just Guardian of Godolkin, which yeah, is they, too many sy- syllables to fix- anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they have to fix the whole thing because since he couldn't make it because he of course he's investigating what the hell you know happened yeah and finally discover that patrick's brother sam is alive which everybody thought that he was dead mm-hmm. um and that's what you know that's what all of a sudden that's why he was there and he was like surprised that and not only that but the thing that you of course you catch on to is that somehow Vought goes ahead and one they went ahead and they went into uh luke's bedroom or dorm room and they sanitized his entire room yeah they I mean, said it smelt of cleaner uh of chlorine or or, or something like that a yeah, bleach, bleach. Or some, a bleach or something like that. So they completely yep. sanitize his entire room. They took everything from there. And also they went into um uh they went into the office where of course Andre was at. Yeah. And they took the computers, they took the hard drives, they took everything. So basically it's a cover up where they don't want anybody to know. It's what- like Vought military went in there, and that's why they had all the guns. Hell. You know, save right. yourself, everybody. Hide your janitor because they wind up killing him in the hallway. <laughs> that was that was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, he was like, "Hey guys, oh, well, you're not supposed to be here." Boom, boom, boom. No, it's like, damn, yeah. they just killed him. <laughs> no, there there was no gunshot. They just slit his throat. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, they, they yeah, but they still his, killed him. <laughs> they still killed him. You know, which is crazy. But and of course, Andre almost gets caught. And, you know, and then uh, actually does get caught by another guard. And then a, another guard comes down and starts to talk 
to the other guard talking about how they're going to shove the uh, what is the, the uh, flashlight. You, you she goes, you know what you're going to do? You're going to take your flashlight. You're going to su- I'm going to put wet, it down. You're going you're to wet the it, flashlight with your mouth. And then you're going to shove it up your chocolate asshole. No, <laughs> just chocolate starfish. Starfish. OK, you got it. I didn't. I didn't get the quote. But <laughs> yeah, then you come to find out that Kate was above and had touched the girl soldier to come down because at that point when Andre got caught, they used, um, what was it? A sonic sound because they said that their sound, their hearing is a lot more like dogs. Yeah. It says that people with, uh, with powers have a lot much higher, uh, sensitivity to sensitivity to frequencies. Yeah. So that's how he was able to almost control him or something like that. Yeah, he was able to like immobilize him for a while. It's kind of like a Correct. using like a dog whistle because yeah. Whist- yeah, dog whistles could yeah hurt dogs. That's why don't people don't use them all the time. But yeah, the uh, you get that whole scene and are able to get away because Kate did that for him. But she winds up passing out. He has to grab her and hold her because <laughs> she had done it way too many times, I guess, throughout the day. Right. And it just taps her. And that's probably why she wouldn't be her also wouldn't be part of the seven. Because if you're constantly it's like if you're going to wipe out after like, oh, I touched like 10 people and I'm right. I can't do anything, you know? Yeah, everything everything in this show is all about them wanting to be part, you know, part of the seven, which is crazy because now makes you think about, well, did the original seven have to go through all these things? Oh, they did. You know that they right. did for the fact that you see how messed up Maeve is. Right. In the end, how messed up her life was. Homelander was a genetic mess up altogether from like yeah but i don't think he went to college i think he was just uh what was it he was just uh what i was he say, was just know. brought up in that in, in a, a lab and in a lab or something as, right. but he was raised by the doctors and scientists yeah to to do all that stuff but uh like a train and we already saw that in the first episode when it was the introduction of a train into the seven so it was the first person of color to be introduced into the se- uh, to the seven, but he Correct. was brought in. So I and I think Polarity said that, uh, which is Andre's father. Uh, but yeah, I, I and I think Polarity himself was probably all messed up. He was probably brought up in that school as well. Yeah. No, <laughs> and, exactly. So yeah, and I find it funny too because uh, the way Andre finds the phone. After he figures it out, he, he, <laughs> yeah. Luke hit it inside the crotch of uh, Andre's father's statue at Gadolkin University. So it's in his crotch. So he has to rip open the crotch with his powers <laughs> to get the phone, which was basically him stating that Sam is alive and he knows something. And that's why he confronted Brinkman or Brink to... Right. Uh, and that was the whole point behind uh, the whole tragedy that had happened. He was trying to expose it to the world. And uh, he loved his brother, but his brother was taken. And then we find out through Andre's research that his brother, uh, Luke's brother, Sam, was a little bit out there. He's crazy. He had to be locked up, but they, he found a most recent file and the kid looked familiar to him. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely him. Uh, and then when they show actual footage of, you know, that it is him, um, they're doing something to his back. So it looked like, you know, so it looked like something like a spinal tap or something like that, that they were doing to his back. Yeah. But I'm just wondering why, why, why were they doing what they're doing? Um, doing basically, all these weird experiments. Yeah, they're doing all these weird, either weird experiments or torturing or whatever it is. I mean, it's all messed up. So, yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, I thought it was uh, it was an interesting episode. Uh, we we did get some good music. We got to see a lot more uh, of the characters, and that's literally how the episode progressed in some way. It was really centered around Marie, Andre, Kate a little bit, and Emma. So right, and then and Jordan, and Jordan. So. Can we talk about how this simulates a lot of the X-Men? 
Yeah. Um, because I started thinking about it. It's like, well, a lot of the, okay, first of all, just like the X-Men, mm-hmm. um, all these kids are born with their powers and yeah. their powers seems to manifest either. Uh, it seems like it manifests by puberty, just like in the X-Men. Yes. Um, so you have somebody. So my, so Patrick is basically, he could set himself on fire. So I, I mean, to compare him to who, uh, jet, uh, what's her, what's the starfire Starfire, and, a, and it was a human sun, torch and you then know, you got sunfire sunfire, sunfire was right. the asian version of right. Starfire. then uh kate who touches people and influences people i mean really she's more of an empath but she has to touch people yeah but she re- she reminds me of rogue correct you know so in that case instead of stealing then, people's powers she's there to influence correct and then you have somebody like Marie who cuts herself and manipulates blood. I'm trying to figure out who she um, takes after on, you know, in the X-Men or something like that. Or if there's anything well, Andre similar would to be that. Forge. No, because Andre it- can manipulate metal. So it's like Magneto. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. That, that more Magneto than than Forge. Has more, Forge, right? Forge was really more manipulation of uh, mechanics and robots. Correct. Okay. So, and then um, Jordan, which can switch, you know, gender, but also has super strength, a, super and, strength, and, and things like that. Skin. So, I mean, there, you know, I guess you could say there's several mutants out there, of course, that have that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Emma, who shrinks. I mean, the only person I could think of is Ant Man, but <laughs> or what's her name now? Uh, his daughter. Oh yeah. Uh, who's uh, I forgot what they call her now, but yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if there's a mutant that can do that, that could shrink itself. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there they created <laughs> one. The the X Men lore goes for I don't know what sixty seventy years at this point. Yeah, something so. like that. So it's crazy. <laughs> uh, and then Ben, what's Ben's powers again? Ben, who are you talking about, Ben? Uh, the guy that's there's a isn't there a Ben in there? Maybe he hasn't come out yet. Like I'm looking at the cast of. I'm looking on the Wikipedia for just for the main cast. Okay. That's about it. All right. So, but yeah, so then you have like, you know, so, but again, like Marie's the only one that I'm trying to figure out who she simulates as a mutant. But yeah, all of them have mute, like what well, all of them have like, you know, like mutant abilities that they're born with. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a school just like Xavier school for, you know, for uh, gifted youngsters. Mm-hmm. And it's very like the first, like the boys is basically kind of a knockoff of the Justice League. And yeah. even uh, the Justice Leagues and even the Avengers, because uh, what's his name? Um, who has, you know, the, the soldier, soldier so- boy, soldier boy. What about soldier him? boy is supposed to be like Captain America or something like that. Technically, yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, so it's kind of a take on that. This seems to be a take on the X-Men. Very true. So, which is interesting, but much, much darker. (laughs) (laughs) It is. It is far, far darker. Yeah. Uh, Darker completely. I I, I haven't seen anybody with optic blasts or that can manipulate, you know, uh, the weather. (laughs) <laughs> um, or cl- have claws coming out. There is a kid though that looked blue. So in the first episode, when yeah. they were doing the commercial, there was a blue kid with horns. So I was like, "Oh, that's simulating a nightcrawler." Oh, yeah, we also well, we also had a chick with a tail that uh, Justine was trying to get. Hey, stick your tail in your mouth. Get it in there. <laughs> <laughs> she had a tail. And yeah. she kind of did something with the tail too. Although I'm not saying dirty, but she right, did stick right. it in her mouth. And that was one of the girls that was there for the selfies because she actually smacked her friend with it. 
Yes. Like, oh, you ruined it. She just <laughs> ran off. We didn't get her selfie. <laughs> but yeah, so it's uh, it's. I wonder how Marvel is like looking at this and going, oh my god. <laughs> well, well, the, the funny thing is, is too one of the executive producers is a dead giveaway of why this show is so extreme. And he also did that when he started out with Preacher. Because hmm. Preacher was very extreme when we covered that, too. A lot, I I thought, you know, because it has a lot of religious, it's literally religious overtones. I thought that uh, Steve wouldn't be able to cover it then, but he was happy enough to do it. And we did cover Preacher. But think of it, Seth Rogen. He created Preacher. Uh, him and... Um, Scott Goldberg, I think, or what's not Goldberg? Um, I'm not sure who uh, who it was, but yeah, I, I forgot the, the 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 other producer. He did. Um, I think he is. Uh, I'm forgetting the producer, but we're, we're nonetheless, they when Seth Rogen's name's attached to it, you know it's going to be a little bit of an extremism because if you look at Invincible on Amazon Prime too. Mm-hmm. That is extreme for an animated show. Oh, of course. It was so bloody and a lot of cursing. Trust me, I can't wait for the uh, second season on that <laughs> one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And then I, I just love how, and, and on top of that, the perverseness of it, you know, makes me not want to say Jumanji out loud now if I'm <laughs> passing somebody. <laughs> That uh, I did. You see him in the background? Yes, when he, did he screamed that? it out as they were passing her, and it it was I, I it was either Marie or Kate and Andre passing by, and they were having a yeah. conversation, and all you hear is Jumanji. <laughs> you see him take the bat and run right into his groins or something. <laughs> yeah, what she said to him was, "It's like you're gonna take a little jog over to Dick's Sporting Goods, buy yourself a nice Louisville Slugger, bring it right back." to the quad and then swing that bat as hard as you can into your nuts every hour <laughs> on the hour every time you swing yell jumanji sound good <laughs> <laughs> and he was like yeah and he just takes off i was uh, like enthusiastically yeah yeah <laughs> let me tell you it, it that definitely a power i would love to have <laughs> <laughs> What you're gonna do is you're gonna buy this 85 inch OLED TV. <laughs> oh my god, my sales would have gone through the roof. <laughs> uh, and if your wife gives you any lip, you go buy her the most expensive purse or shoes she ever wants. I don't care <laughs> if you guys are in debt for the rest of your life. <laughs> this will help your marriage. Trust me. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. man yeah there, there was a lot of cool moments in this episode i was satisfied and happy uh but yeah that, that that was it for me in quotes and for highlights and what i thought about the episode yeah no it's uh it's very good again they they're in uh they started very well um the it's kept me engaged uh, like I said, I already saw the third episode. I haven't seen the fourth. Yeah. So on the third episode, you find out a lot more things, um, which you will find out pretty soon. Hmm. But I I can't wait to see what else comes out of this, because honestly, while I think the boys in terms of being messed up, it's super extreme what i was saying because oh, yeah. the shit that uh highlander does and the shit that everybody does is just over the top there's a there's some over the top moments here but there's a lot of psychological shit here too there is i mean there is just deep rooted shit here that you just like wow i definitely got to see you know how they're going to deal with all this <laughs> so well we got 8 episodes total for this season awesome we have when he initially released for uh, the first day, it was the first three episodes. Obviously, we're only covering them individually. Right. But they released the first three. That means you only have five left. Actually, in, I now you got four left. Yesterday. The one just came out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, episode four came out. So uh, I, I look forward to see because now you're halfway there. Correct. So there's a lot. To, to ingest really quickly. So I'm curious about how they wrap up 
this season and and qu- which makes me question will this lead into the boys the, the actual boys series and the next season right i don't know that's a good question I, um i don't know how this relates to the boys in the timeline it's current day literally it's after the issues with lot uh because they you've seen the uh commercials or even newscasts on tv about homelander and what he had done okay uh the last episode they showed that oh I, you know what i didn't catch that so in the background in the background okay so yeah i didn't catch that but i'm wondering well okay yeah, I, I guess part of me, I guess we have to see the boys just to see how this, uh, so you could then go, oh, okay, this relates to this show. Yeah. They're either going parallel to each other or if it's actually right after, or, you know, all of this. Yep. Or before all of this. So it all depends. Yep, it does. But, uh, yep, well, with that, that was our coverage, I feel. I think we covered it enough <laughs> for one I- episode. Yeah, no, it was great. I think, like I said, I definitely highly recommend it. I think, you know, of course, beware. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) It's not a show for kids. All right. So, but other than that, I think fantastic show on that. Uh, So far, so good. Yeah. All right. Put out for uh, feedback, ladies and gentlemen, but we didn't get much, but we did get something from Steve. So we'll, we'll listen what Steve has to say. He couldn't make it this week with us, so. Hey, panelers, it's Steve again, and, uh, you know, I'm not here for Gen V, but I'm watching the show, and I'm loving it, and gosh, I can't wait to see where this show is going to go. Man, it's so crazy. That uh, scene at the end, I had to cover my eyes when that guy said, give me that flashlight. Yeah, that was just, uh, uh, eek. But anyway, uh-huh. the whole thing is just great. I, I can't wait to see this mystery unfold with the woods. I uh, loved seeing Colby Menifee. And uh, just can't wait to, to see how how this uh, this season is going to progress and what other, like I said before, what other cameos we're going to get. I can't wait uh, to see who is going to show up and how is Marie Moreau going to navigate this new reality that she's in where, you know, she never had a phone before. Now she's given a phone. She's the first freshman to be in the top ten. Mm. All these things are are great, and I'm sorry that I couldn't be there to cover it uh, with Rob and Mark, but guys, you're going to do a great job. I can't wait to listen to it. I will talk to you later. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. But yeah, uh, that leads us into uh, our uh, feedback and how you can get give us feedback. As always, uh, you know, we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player your choice. There's a rating or review there. Please do so. Be greatly appreciated. Uh, people have given given us uh, reviews on Apple Podcasts, which is the premier, you know, most favored choice of uh, podcast player out there, apparently. Uh, but, you know, they've been all fives, which I'm happy, happy about. So thank you. Uh, but if people could continue to do so, gives a little bit more awareness about us as well as, you know, word of mouth. Uh, you can find us on our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels the pixels. Like I said, I put it out there. So I always leave an image of what we're covering and then to say, hey, put them in the comments below. But all you have to do is check out the Facebook page every once in a while. And the same thing goes for Instagram. And that can be found at panels the pixels podcast. So, you know, just subscribe and then, uh, you know, check us out every once in a while. You'll probably get notified. Just like you would do if you do YouTube, which we are also on. All you have to do is look for Panels to Pixels podcast. Push the subscribe button. That way you'll be alerted. And actually, the bell will alert you every time. But uh, give us a thumbs up. Always helps out. And then, obviously, you could just email us at Panels to Pixels 1 at gmail.com. That's Panels TO for 2 and Pixels and the number 1 at Gmail. So you could just send out a regular text and email. It's amazing. Uh, and it, or you could just record yourself and send it as an attachment and we'll play it. But the next episode will be covering episode four, but look forward to us covering Loki season two, episode one. So Steve, Rob, and I will be back for that. And uh, we're trying to do these independently. So people don't get spoiled on something or they don't have to sit through something they don't want to listen to. Cause those people that would be like, oh, I just wanted to listen, hear about Gen V. I didn't want to hear about Loki, which I understand. Some people or are vice not. versa. 
Yeah. Vice versa. <laughs> so, but Rob, where could people hear you? Uh, so you could hear me and the rest of the Motley crew <laughs> at a uh, fantasy picks movie edition, the podcast that we cover, you know, failed movies. And we actually do our own fantasy picks on actors, directors, story and stuff like that. Try to fix it to see if it, it would succeed. We also do our top five drafts on different types of movie genres, actors and you know, anything that has to do with movies. And now our new edition is called uh, Behind the Score, which we just finished doing on Zimmer okay. with Adam Gonzalez and George. Uh, I forgot. I forget his last name. And I apologize for George. Right. Oh, Jorge is actually his name. Jorge Naranjo, I think is his uh, name. I apologize for that. But we just finished doing Hans Zimmer, which was great. So, yeah. The, we cover those three things. Uh, and so if you can listen to us, let us know what you think of the show. And we definitely would appreciate it. Awesome. Well, as always, you could hear me here at Unpanels the Pixels podcast, as always. And you can hear me at Adrenaline Cinema podcast as well. And uh, you guys know the deal. I, we cover action, adventure, sport. No, yeah, eventually we'll do sports. I this I do want to do Shaolin soccer, so <laughs> some sports there too. <laughs> Shaolin Shaolin soccer is not a sport; it's a movie. <laughs> uh, it is a sports movie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. It's not a sport. Shaolin soccer is not a sport. Yeah, Shaolin soccer is not a sport, but it'd be awesome if they did. Uh, uh, we, we hey, just... listen, I would be so into it if it was like that. My God. <laughs> uh, but we do uh, fantasy, thriller, suspense movies as well. By the time you get this uh, Escape from New York will be out that uh, Frank Rodriguez <laughs> and I had covered. So check that out when you can. That's Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. But uh, for now, you can hear me here. All right. But with that, I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Robert. <laughs> different panel, different pixels, same podcast. This was Panel Pixels Podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I'm too, I'm too busy laughing. <laughs> I couldn't do that right. <laughs>